today on a kingdom defining edition of Fixing the Money Thing. The world's changing. It needs light. And it, it's, it's hungry for the things of God, the real things of God. Not religion, not church buildings, the power of God. From a recent message Gary delivered to a men's meeting at Faith Life Church, don't look at the dirt today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. Hey guys, we're here in Florida. Join the sunshine. And Jordan and I thought we'd just take a few minutes to kind of talk to you about your year and how it's heading out, how it's moving ahead. And there's some really valuable principles that you need to know and apply yes. to reach your goals for 2022. Yes, there's laws of the kingdom that when we learn those and apply them in our lives, things happen that are amazing. Gary, you just did a, a series talking, men's conference, and just sharing about some of those laws. What are some of those laws and how they, can they help people? Well, basically the first law is What's your vision? What do you see? You'll never, ever, ever take something you first have not seen and desire to take. And so this is called the law of dominion. The law of dominion is when you, when you think about where you're headed, you see it. You're not there yet, but it's, it's your, a picture. It's a picture, correct. It's a picture. It can be a promise. It can be a goal. But it's a picture that you decide, that's, that's mine. I'm going to take that. Now, Drenda, here's the thing that happens next. Once you decide on your dominion, where you're going to take legal jurisdiction, your capacity basically is the law of capacities, how you live each day. How you use your time each day to reach your goal is called the law of capacity. And Drenda, most people are already maxed out doing things that make no impact on reaching their goals and their dominion. Right. They're yeah. just doing busy work. Well, and also they get distracted with so many things just trying to survive in life that they're not headed toward the destiny, the vision. So focusing and keeping your eyes fixed on the prize, on the on the destiny that you're trying to go after. It's like we're riding this boat. Hold on to your hat. <laughs> yep. Hold on to your hat. So <laughs> you gotta stay you gotta stay focused on what's going on. And we're headed somewhere in this boat. We have a destination to reach. Many times people are just living their life, going through the motions, surviving, but they're not focused. And because they're not focused, their capacity to handle whatever distraction isn't there. Uh, they get pulled off. The enemy knows how to pull people off of their destiny with trouble, with problems, persecution, whatever it is. It's just like it chokes out the word, but it also chokes out your destiny because it tries to overshadow where you're headed. And so it's very important yeah. not to let problems, people, situations get you off focus and so growing in your capacity to handle those situations will help determine where you're going to go. I mean, here's the key. Your capacity probably is already maxed out. What has to change is what I call the processes. How you do things has to change. Without change, you're going to stay where you're at. So for instance, if you're going to harvest a field of one acre, you can do that with a very small piece of equipment. But if you're going to harvest a field of, let's say 500 acres, you're gonna to have to have a combine or more than one combine. So as you progress towards your goals of reaching your dominion, you're gonna to have to actually change. It's a word you have to remember. You're gonna to have to allow yourself to change processes, how you live each day how you handle the pressure of that day. And as Rinda said, the distractions are gonna hold you hostage unless you change your processes. Here's the key that you need to understand. Here's how to identify what needs to be changed. What frustrates you about your day? Frustration is an indicator of the processes that have to be changed. So what frustrates you, write it down, and then think, how am I going to change that process so I'm no longer frustrated about that? So for instance, if you need to mow your grass, you can mow your grass yourself, 
or you can hire it done. That's an example of changing your processes to eliminate the frustration and the delay of moving forward. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you gotta get away from the frustrations to see the picture, to see the big picture. It's one of the reasons we're out here today on the boat, because yeah. you need to get away sometimes just to clear your head, to hear God. You know, Jesus had to get away to a quiet place to hear God. Sometimes the frustrations, the pressures can get so much to lose the big picture, what you're really trying to get done. Yes, that's right. So it's very crucial that you keep the focus, you write it, make it write plain, it down. and then you focus on it. And whatever hinders it, like Gary said, whatever frustrations come your way, you can let the frustrations become your focus. As yeah, soon yeah. as they become your focus, you are losing you're done, ground. Yeah, yeah. You're not going toward the mark anymore. And Satan will send frustrations, won't we? <laughs> You're going to have frustrations just in the fact that you're going someplace you've never been before and you're going to be engaging in processes you've never done before. So that whole thing is, you know, frustrating, but at least it identifies what you have to focus on, like Drenda said, in the sense of with a solution and change. Now, the way you do that, how you help navigate that is my third law I talk about, which is the law of administration. Administration tells you how you are advancing towards your goal, or if you're on target. So how do I know if my processes are effective or not? Administration tells me I am way off target. There's no way I'm gonna get that done. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna reach my goal. So administration, you have the data and the facts about your processes in relation to your dominion, your destiny, is how you judge what needs to be changed. The law of administration is where so many people miss the changes that have to occur. In other words, let's say it this way. You go to bed at night and then you have to think, what did I get done that day? If you think, what did I get done that day? See, administration, or let me put administration a very easy concept, a to-do list would have given you a very clear, concise pathway to reach your goal for that day and your processes to be effective. So administration, data, and numbers, return on investment, whatever data you're looking at, but you have to have data, the law of administration to move forward. That's right. Don't let your email control you, you control it. Yes. You decide what you're gonna get done today, and then you can pick a time you're gonna focus on these other things. You gotta build some of that into your day, because obviously there's gonna be things that happen you didn't intend to happen that day, but we can't let our days be railroaded if we're going to get to our destination. And that's, that's right. the goal. The goal is this year you're going to get to the prize. That spoke to Gary and I both. And this is going to be a year that you have to be faithful. You're going to have to persevere through things to be faithful. But it will give way to reward. There will be a reward. There's a prize. In all labor, there's profit. That's right. So here's the fourth law. And that is strengthen your vision. Or strengthen, we call it, strengthen your stakes. You know, stake your going to stake to the ground your vision and here's why because if you do not have that vision as Drinda said written down look at it and remember how good it's going to be when you get there yes. you'll faint all right so you need to have that vision written down you need to have accountability you need to not change your vision here's a question have you changed your vision because of the frustrations you encountered on the way there well, you don't want to dumb down your vision. You want to change the processes and change your ability yes. to get there. Deal with the frustrations. Deal with the frustrations, change not the, the vision. Don't, don't change, the vision. change the vision. So that last law, the law I call it the law of pressure, is that you hold to the vision. Without exception, that's not a, an issue that you can change. This is where you're going. This is going to dictate and demand the answers that are necessary and you will get there and it'll be glorious. It'll be a great year. God will do a lot of great things. Hey, maybe we should go to your teaching. Okay, let's go there right now to our men's meeting where I was talking about some good ideas and some concepts to go alongside these laws I just talked about that'll help you get there. to have all of you here. It's great to see you. Have a seat. Oh, what a great sight to see all of us guys together. Amen. 
the world's changing. It needs light. And it, it's, it's hungry for the things of God, the real things of God. Not religion, not church buildings, the power of God. But uh, I'm going to give you a couple points that we need to talk about. I think most of you know my story. Total chaos, debt, antidepressants, panic attacks for nine years, uh, really hopeless, uh, yet born again, spirit-filled, love church, love the anointing, but uh, could not see how to get what the Bible said in my life. You know, I could learn it, I, had to, uh, I could quote it, but I couldn't quite get it to manifest. Anyone else ever been there? Yeah, well, how many know that's not how it's supposed to work? Okay. It's because a lot of the religious teaching we've had that uh, has hindered us to receive. So we need to kind of jump in that and kind of retrain our brains. But I want to mark this down. We're going to talk about this. Number one, these are some steps, so take notes. Number one, if you want to get ahead with God, you've got to stop the chaos. You know, the Bible says that God's voice is that still, quiet voice. You know, Jesus had to get away to a, what? Quiet place. But when things are chaotic and things are in chaos, you know, it's sometimes hard to hear. And I was living a life of chaos, and you might be as well. So, number one, we got to stop the chaos, and you need to understand how that works. About three weeks ago, I had a, a dream in the night about a young lady that sings on our platform that uh, in the dream, she had cancer. And I didn't know that, but in the dream, she had cancer. And in the dream, I laid my hands on her, and God showed me how to deal with that. And I thought, well, should I call her, you know, because God, I knew, it, I knew what to do. I knew what to do, but should I call her? Should I? And I really felt my spirit, don't call her. Now, she goes to over our PAL campus, so I didn't see her very often. And uh, so that was three weeks ago. And so this Saturday night, I didn't know she was here, but I was on the front row, and we were in worship. The anointing of God was strong. And all of a sudden, I had this urgency in my spirit that I was to pray for people to pray against cancer. So I came up front and I said, hey, anyone have cancer, been diagnosed with cancer, I'd like you to come up front. And uh, here comes this young lady. I didn't know she's even here. She comes around, here she comes up front. And so I, I knew exactly what to do because I'd already seen it. God showed me exactly what to do. So I want to help you understand because here's what he said to do. He said, you go up and lay your hands on her and you say these words. I'm just, these are the exact words he said to say to her. He said, get out. Get out. No, you don't. Get out of here. Get out. That's what he said. You got to stop the chaos. The enemy is going to take you on a ride. He wants to keep you in chaos. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and you have to stop him. And you'll have to know how to do that. So I appreciate the Holy Spirit showing me how to do that with her. And so that was pretty amazing to watch God, how he works. But uh, Acts chapter 22, turn there in your Bibles, because I'm sure there's things in your life you need to get out. And you need to change. Now, obviously, the Bible says truth is what sets you free. So obviously, truth is necessary to walk in freedom. But you also need to be able to recognize what the enemy's doing, you know, what you're doing. And to separate that, you need to be able to discern. Uh, that's what Romans chapter 12 says, to no longer be conformed to the uh, pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can test and approve what God's perfect will is for your life. You got to know what to say yes to, what to say no to. But so spiritually, the enemy, the enemy jumps in behind lies. He jumps in. He's a, the father of lies. He tries to get you to believe a lie, which gives him jurisdiction. And so you have to be able to discern truth to walk free. But he comes in behind that. And he brings bondage and oppression and disease and problems. And it's going to come in the door of, of what the Bible says, doctrine of demons. Doctrine of demons is anything that's opposed to what God says is right. So you must become a student of the kingdom. You must know what the kingdom says. So you must know the laws of the kingdom. You must learn what is legal and your position in the kingdom and your position of spiritual authority in the kingdom and how to deal with spiritual oppression and sickness and disease and poverty. Anything that's not in heaven is not right. You have to know how to handle it. Otherwise, it'll handle you, right? Right? 